Drinking Buddies, Kurt from SLB Drinks, challenged me to come up with my most interesting bourbons and whiskeys in my collection. Let's go. I'm your drinking buddy. <sighs> All right, Drinking Buddies. So my good friend Kurt over at SLB Drinks challenged me to tell you what my most interesting whiskeys are. And I'm going to go with the themes that he used in his bottles. Um, Anyone that I challenge at the end of this video doesn't have to do it exactly like this, but this is how I found it to be the interesting way to do it. He started with a scotch, and I'm not a scotch guy, so I decided to just do a world whiskey for my first one, and I went with Alberta Premium Cask Strength. Now, I think this is a really great whiskey, and I often forget it's in my cabinet, but every time I go to it, it's just a great candy bar rye, like with tons of caramel notes, vanilla notes, and uh, very light on the spicy uh, herbal stuff that you get off of a lot of rice. Don't say, not saying that those are bad notes, I'm just saying that you don't get that off here. It's, it's you know, even for being Canadian and probably 100% rye, um, it doesn't drink that way. It's, it's very uh, fruity and, and uh, uh, candy bar. So, Alberta, Alberta Premium Cask Strength. I just realized there's two Canadian whiskeys on this list, which is wild. Um, all right. Um, not often for me to do that. Uh, anyway, so next up, he picked a really interesting rye. And so he chose the, um, the Jack Daniels uh, special release rye from a few years ago. And I thought about just putting the regular Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof rye on here. But I wanted to go a little bit more interesting because I have this really wild whiskey. And... Uh, yeah. This Tattershall, I just got it, so I have not drank very much of it. But I, uh, this Tattershall, it's 132 proof rye. It's 100% rye mash bill. Let's see, it's, um, yeah, just 100% rye mash bill. And uh, yeah, wild stuff. Um, caramel, um, butterscotch bomb, a very, um, you know, Herbal finish, but no herbs on really the nose or the palate. Uh, it's just a really interesting whiskey. I really dig it. Uh, some cherry on here as well. Takes you on a wild ride. This was a store pick at Total Wine at 132 proof, and it was $44 with tax in a pretty expensive state for liquor. Uh, anyway, Tattershall, rye, really good. I do feel like there's a little bit of a recency bias on this list because this is a newer bottle. There's a couple newer bottles to come. And that just comes with the fact that, you know, some of the more interesting stuff that's been through my bar, I've either talked about a lot or um, it was so interesting it's gone. So next up, uh, he chose a limited release and I wanted to keep this unicorn free, but since his was a limited release, he had four roses LE. I went ahead and went with the um, Found North Batch 5. Now this was, this is the one that I've kind of savored the most. Most of my four Found Norths are pretty low. I've savored this one because I really love it. Um, this is the only weeder they've ever released. And uh, so it's 73% 21-year-old uh, corn whiskey blended with 27% 8-year-old wheat whiskey. And it is just delightful. I think it's a great alternative to... Um, you know, to WLW, to Maker Cellar Age, those types of things uh, that, that are very hard to find. Now, I get it. This is also very hard to find because it's a limited release. It's long gone, but man, was it excellent. And hopefully they do another weeder soon. Next up, he picked Barrel Seagrass. So I was kind of keep staying in that same vein and going with another finished whiskey. And I have this barrel um, whiskey that's finished in rum casks. And I believe this to be MGP's uh, light whiskey, or it could be a blue rye, but I think it's MGP's light whiskey. Um, it possibly blended with Canadian bourbon. I don't know. Or sorry. Possibly blended with Kentucky bourbon, because it does say distilled in Kentucky and Indiana, but it does call itself whiskey, not bourbon. Anyway, long story short, I don't like rum finishes, and I love this whiskey. Uh, now, this is a pick that my good friends over at Nana's Kitchen did, but they have other offerings similar to this, so you can't get this bottle. There are whiskeys finished in rum barrels that exist that might say taste similar to this. There are, there's barrel dovetail, there's barrel seagrass. So, so something in that vein I think is really interesting. Barrel's doing fun things, especially when you can get something like this. Next up, he chose a 
Oh, a weeded bourbon. He had uh, ASW Fiddler. So instead of going in that round vein, I went with a really, really wild wheat whiskey. This is the uh, Rio Bravos Distillery Wheat Whiskey. Uh, it's barrel proof. It's 121.6 proof. Um, I doubt you can get this outside of the state of Texas, but I'm going to talk about them because I think they're cool and hopefully they get bigger because this is delicious. This is a wild ride. Um, it drink, as you can see, I've only had a couple pours out of it, but, but, uh, Every time I've had a pour out of this thing, I love it. Once again, recency bias, I know, but it's so interesting. It's a wild ride. It's, um, it does have some young grain things going on it. It's a little bit barnyard, but there's just delicious things going on here. I would say, um, if you're a fan of what they're doing at Garrison Brothers or, um, Journeyman, some of the, some of the craft distilleries out there that are giving you a very wild ride, you'll be into this. Next up, he chose another finished whiskey. And uh, I thought I would talk about how great uh, Middle West's dub, uh, Ported Pumpernickel Rye is. This is 99.5 proof. It is cheaper than Midwinter Night's Dram. It's easier to find than Midwinter Night's Dram. And dare I say, it is better than Midwinter Night's Dram. Uh, it's a ported rye. It's delicious. Uh, got some really crazy flavors on there, like... Um, like dates, prunes, and fireworks. Uh, very great, very, very, very great whiskey. I love that thing. And I recommend you look for it. Last up, he had an American single malt. And he chose Whiskey Del Bach, which is, as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of Whiskey Del Bach. Um, it's in my hometown, they do a great job. But since he chose Whiskey Del Bach, I decided to go in a different direction and I wanted to mention this Balcones Cataleja. Um, I, I am, I, I'm so scared I'm going to end up drinking this thing before it even can get to the end of the year tournament to compete because I love it so much. This is one of the best American single malts I've ever tasted. It's probably, it could be the best malt whiskey I've ever tasted. So in that contention would be several of the Whiskey Del Bach entries and Redbreast 21 and Redbreast 27, Redbreast 12 year cask strength. Those are, and, uh, some Stranahan's, uh, single barrels at Barrel Proof. Those are the best single barrels. Those are the best American single malts I can think of, and this might be better than all of them. Um, so if you're able to still get this thing before it's gone because it was their anniversary bottle, do so because it's excellent. Well, uh, these were my seven most interesting whiskeys on my uh, currently in my bar. Yes, I know some of them are new to the bar. That Maybe that's why I'm excited to talk about them. Maybe that's why they're a little bit, uh, you know, um, full. You know, this guy I barely just opened. This guy I barely just opened. This guy I barely just opened. Uh, but that they're just so interesting. I wanted to talk about them. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I got to challenge a couple people. So I think we will definitely challenge Steven at Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans. We will challenge uh, the Bourbon Hutch. And we will challenge Carlos at the uh, Whiskey Corner. Anyway, drinking buddies, thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.